SELFSI, Spoken Easy Language for Social Inclusion. Hello everyone, thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here today and I'm going to share some results of my research work and to understand a bit why we are here at university talking about easy language. So first, a few words about myself. Here's a picture of me explaining literally easy language to my cat during a research fair. And uh, I am um, I have a, a PhD in Italian linguistics, and I'm currently a research fellow here at SSLMIT, uh, which means that I do research, I'm paid to do research, and I'm also the author of the first guidelines designed on the Italian language for uh, Easy Italian. So, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about easy and spoken language to understand if they are somewhat related. And by uh, spoken language here, I'm referring to the language that we speak every day with each other. So I'm not referring to uh, spoken easy language. And I'm going to discuss some answers from research, from my research, and some things that we should learn from spoken language when using easy language and some things that we should not learn because they can be harmful. And I'm going to share with you some final thoughts. So first of all, um, the relationship between easy and spoken language is well known. Indeed, some guidelines for easy language mention spoken language as a model. Here you can see a list of guidelines, MENCAP, North Yorkshire, Country Council, etc., uh, which recommend using spoken language when writing easy language. So most guidelines refer to writing. However, others say that easy language should not imitate spoken language uh, because of some structures and features that spoken language has. For example, uh, interjections. So like when you speak, you say, mm -hmm, uh -huh, ah, ah, that those are interjections or like uh, some stereotypical uh, structures that you can use. So not everyone agrees on the um, on the well the the spoken language as a model for for easy language. But I wanted to understand if we can actually uh, recommend using spoken language as a model for easy language. So for my research, I took uh, different varieties of texts and I compared them. I took some texts in uh, Easy Italian, which were mostly written by ANFAS. Today, uh, we have some representatives of this association, the ANFAS Association. And I compared them with newspaper articles, which represent an average Italian, which is medium to difficult to understand. Some spoken conversations, which are taken from a an old project by Tullio De Mauro, which was called LIP, and which transcribed conversation, conversations um, recorded in the 90s. And finally, I looked at Due Parole, which was uh, the Italian version of a Swedish newspaper called Otte Sidor, uh, which was an easy uh, newspaper. Um, so Due Parole actually was uh, kind of similar to Easy Language, but it was the 90s version in Italy. So each of, his cate was of these categories uh, contains about 100,000 words. And what did I do? I basically counted using my computer some features, for example, I counted um, I, I, I measured readability. What is readability? It is how easy a text is to read. And then I measured 
the length of sentences, so how many words there are in a sentence, the, uh, which parts for sentences and their structure. Are they difficult? How they are made, etc. Then I looked at words. Which words do easy and spoken language tend to choose? And then words from the Nuovo Vocabulario di Base, which is a list uh, created again by Tullio De Mauro, uh, which contains uh, the most used words in Italian. So basically, we can assume that the, the words from Nuovo Vocabulario di Base are uh, the most known words by Italian speakers. So my results that you can find in my PhD thesis dissertation show that texts in easy language often share features with um, spoken language. So they lie between easy and spoken language. They kind of look like written texts, but they also look like spoken texts. For example, easy language is closer uh, to spoken language uh, from several points of view. Uh, it contains more verbs than nouns, and verbs are good. Verbs usually indicate an action or a happening or something that's, that's happening. So they are automatically uh, linked to something that happens. Whereas nouns can be anything from very concrete things to abstract things. It contains less adjectives and adverbs, which may indicate that it is less specific, less detailed. When you use easy language and when you speak, you tend to avoid specificity. You say less. Then it contains easier verbs, moods, and tenses. For example, uh, easy and both easy and uh, spoken language avoid the subjunctive mood, which in Italian can be more difficult to understand than the indicative mood. And um, there are more easy words uh, coming from the Nuovo Vocabulario di Base. Um, here, I want to discuss some things that we can learn when uh, referring to easy language uh, from spoken language. So we can learn that we should use shorter sentences. However, spoken language is not always, um, does not always choose uh, easier and shorter sentences. I will discuss it in the next slide. Use more verbs, because as I mentioned, verbs are good. Choose moods or tenses that are easier. Uh, choose easy words that you use, in, you use in your daily conversations. And choose the same word to define the same object or idea. Uh, before uh, repetition was mentioned, uh, when talking about the results in Italy, uh, in general, in the Salsi project, and repetition is something that written Italian tends to avoid. So it's basically when you go to school, repetitions are forbidden. You, you cannot repeat anything. But they are good because you, you do not get confused. Uh, do not be afraid to break grammar rules when you even when you write in uh, easy language. So for example, in Italian, uh, a structure as se lo sapevo, non ci venivo. If, you knew, if I knew it, I wouldn't come, is not accept, accepted by many speakers of Italian, although it is commonly used in Italian, uh, especially in written language. But it's easier to understand than se lo avessi saputo non sarei venuto, even, you do not, even though you do not understand Italian. You can understand that the second version is way longer. However, there are some things that we should not take from spoken language. For example, spoken language is not planned. So when we speak, uh, we do not plan what we are going to say. We have false stars. So, so like we start speaking and then we stop and then we start again and then we hesitate and then we go back and go forth. 
So that's not good. Yeah, you do not plan your, your information order. You do not plan your in, informa information um, importance. So that's something you should keep in mind. Spoken language can be implicit. So it means that it can hide some things. Um, so when you speak, you can like mention things that are not clear often, and that's not good for easy language. Then spoken language often relies on what happens around you. So it was mentioned before, you look in the eyes of people and you point at things and you stress your, um, your tone of voice, you use your tone of voice. However, there are things that are not universally shared. For example, some uh, people with intellectual disabilities have uh, difficulties understanding some um, extra linguistics, extra linguistic things that you can use when speaking. For example, looks or pointing at things. Just think about, about the accessibility of pointing at something. So we should consider some of these issues. Um, finally, spoken language can use irregular structures. For example, in Italian, we can use something called dislocations, which are somewhat used in English as well. For example, my aunt, she is very old. As you can see, my aunt, comma, she is. Or in the Italian uh, sentence, lo mangio più tardi il panino. I will eat it later, my sandwich. So you can see there's uh, repetition and a uh, shift in the uh, structure and in the order of, of, the center, of the sentence. So these are issues that we should keep in mind when um, referring to spoken language as a model for easy language. Uh, however, some final thoughts. Um, easy and spoken language are indeed related, and easy language can be used as a model uh, to which easy language writers and speakers can refer to uh, to make their texts easier. Uh, that's that's a good thing. And if you mention spoken language, uh, you can avoid aspects of written language that can be difficult to, for readers. For example, long sentences. However, please rem remember to plan your speech and difficult words, uh, too many nouns, etc. cetera. Um, so I think that uh, spoken language has features that still should be avoided. So maybe a good practice could be still drafting your speech or your conversation beforehand. So you can plan, you can think of structures that you should avoid, etc. So just a hint uh, coming from research. And thank you for your attention. Selfsy, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Università degli Studi di Trieste, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irskleidos Centras, funded by the European Union.